This question is, what numbers do you focus on? What KPIs do I focus on? And I go, well, I, I really focused on the top line. And I don't get into the number, really, of calls I make or emails I make. I do have kind of one rule that I contact some new uh, prospect a day. And it's a, a way to keep me focused on building up my pipeline. But I, I don't believe in the notion that sales is a numbers game because what it does is it takes away the interpersonal relationship and connection that you have with your prospects or with your clients or with your future customers, whatever you feel comfortable describing them as, instead of the number of emails, the number of phone calls, the number of actions that you take. It's really the quality of those, isn't it? And, and creating the quality of those is increasing. No matter which channel you think is the most effective or doesn't work at all for you. Now, some people still, there was literally, I, I, I put a funny video on LinkedIn about door-to-door -door sales. And there were people just, the door-to-door -door crowd jumped on it saying, oh, there's door-to-door -door people making 300K a year. Congratulations. I don't care. <laughs> I'm very happy for you if you're making tons of money doing what you're doing. Uh, people who ask these questions are people who are doing a lot of hard work and not getting the results. Now, totally get it. Typically, that you know, if it's just what you're doing, it might be the industry, it might be the market, it might be the territory, or it might be all part of that, is that you're not really focusing on the client or the quality needs to go up and maybe the numbers need to go down. And a lot of times people are just in love with the numbers. Activity can be a distraction from accomplishment. And I've seen this a lot, especially in the you know, old school marketing approach. And even in the content marketing, people just fall in love with making videos or podcasts or blog posts, and they just crank them out and they call it a machine. The problem is the quality goes down when the volume goes up because it's hard to write and create new stuff every day or multiple times a day to keep that machine fed and moving. And then you hear the reports and they say, well, like all of nature, it's like, you know, one to 20% of them gets a half of the views or half of the engagement. Now, wouldn't it be better to pick out those and put more energy into them and do deeper? Maybe. It depends on your market. You know, if you're selling something simple and direct and people either want it or don't want it, maybe the numbers game makes sense. If you're selling that something that's new and complicated and needs explaining and timing is a critical thing, maybe num quality is a better metric to look at. Uh, now, this is not an excuse to not take action. I think action is good. Uh, action, but learning. And the problem with action and sales, especially in long-term B2B large sales, is that the feedback circle is so long that the time you get the feedback, you, you kind of miss the lesson. That's why I, you know, take notes. That's why I'm, I'm an avid note taker and keeping track of what's happening. You know, I can go back through all my deals and say, you know, here was the first contact. Uh, here's what they said. And trust me, the feedback is also muddied because people lie or people don't want to tell you the harsh truth that they're not interested. They tell you that they are, send me a quote or let's regroup in two weeks. And what they're really saying is I'm not interested. I want to get off the phone and move on with my life. Now, that might be a, a hidden objection that that they're not interested, and maybe you want to engage more. But it's, my point here is that you're taking that as what they're saying instead of what they mean, and that's why it's so hard in B2B sales to really understand what is working and what isn't working and what knobs to increase and decrease. Now, I don't like the, the typical KPIs because I'm hearing it from everybody in the courses that their managers want, you know, the, this number of emails, this number of phone calls. And, you know, activity is good, but accomplishment is really what we're after. So when the number of activities gets in the way of accomplishment, that's where it's bad. Now, if 
you also you want to have some activities on the right people at the right time. But the problem is we don't know who those are. But that is our job. And I I kind of have honed my business where, you know, I've noticed that, you know, companies of a certain size really fit. Some companies at a certain stage or state or I am one of the alternatives for them. I kind of get a sense of when they are going to really do something when they're not. Everybody's interested. That's the problem in my space is everybody's interested. Everybody wants to talk. Everybody's open-minded. But they're also wasting my time or taking up a lot of time. I shouldn't say wasting it. So find out about your business and find out what the things that really matter, the activities in the quality metric is really what you're looking for. What balance of that is really going to help you crush your number? Thanks for listening. Hey, that was another great question. Hey, as a follow-up, make sure you're connecting up with me on LinkedIn, Brian G. Burns on LinkedIn. Also, if you're on LinkedIn, if you see some of my content, I really appreciate it if you share it, comment, like it, all of that. It really helps out the show. And make sure you're connecting up with the partners, nudge.ai. You get one free month with the Brutal Truth uh, passcode, all one word, Brutal Truth. The same is true with Pipedrive. Pipedrive.com, you get one month free instead of the two weeks. Who, who can evaluate a product in two weeks? Just doesn't make sense. Get a whole month with the Brutal Truth. Also, make sure you're checking out the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast. I'm sure you're a Brutal Truth listener already, but that podcast is really taking off. And go to B2B... <laughs> Another B2B, huh? B2Brevenue.com. That's where I blog. That's where you can get your free ebook. Just submit your email address. It emails you a uh, HTML file with the link in it. Just click on that link and you get the book for free. And on B2Brevenue.com yeah, is my training tab. Just look at training, go down there and click on that. You can find the courses that make the most amount of sense for you. And you got to think of it as an investment. And if you got to ask yourself the question, why do I expect other people to invest in me and I don't invest in myself? Quit thinking like an employee. You're an entrepreneur, a salespreneur, whether you like it or not. Either that or you're going to be an order taker, and you don't want to be that. So you got to get better. And the only way to get better is to practice, learn, get uh, feedback, do it again, practice, learn. That cycle. That's what the training course is all about. You get office hours. You benefit from other people selling other products into other market spaces. Understand what's working for them today. Also, if you're interested in career advice, I got a career advice podcast. I know, Brian, enough with the podcast. But everybody likes a little bit of career advice. I I answer questions there. I kind of share with you what I've seen work and what I've seen fail as far as careers and the mistakes that I've seen people make. So check that out, career advice on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Really appreciate you listening, and we'll see you next time.